Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm delving into a really critical topic, which is the long-term impact of narcissistic abuse on future relationships and also the transformative power of healing. I want to address this topic from both the standpoint of what happens if you don't get totally healed from narcissistic abuse and you enter into future relationships of all kinds and what happens for your relationships if you do get healed. Whether you've experienced narcissistic abuse directly or know somebody who has, this discussion should serve as a beacon of hope and hopefully you will share this with somebody if you know someone who has experienced this abuse, who has not put in the work to get healed fully so that they can see truly the impact of what a healed life can look like for them. So narcissistic abuse is really like a huge tornado or tsunami that comes through somebody's life uh, and not only does destruction while it's there, but it leaves so much chaos and cleanup in its wake. It's a really unique form of emotional abuse, which is really why I so stress hiring a professional who understands narcissistic abuse when you begin your healing process. You don't just want to go to an expert of any kind, not just any therapist, not just any coach, not just any attorney. If you're in court with a narcissist, you really need one who understands narcissistic abuse because it's so unique. Anyway, narcissistic abuse will leave really deep scars and it definitely it will impact your ability to to trust, to love, to form healthy bonds with others and even towards yourself. So let me explain first how this looks for future in, uh, for future relationships, how it impacts them if it's left unhealed. When, when we go into a new relationship after leaving this kind of chaos, you know, I'm sure you can just right now visualize what it's like uh, to, to have an area that's been hit by a really bad tornado or tsunami. And now you're bringing that chaos into a new relationship. So there's broken pieces, there's missing pieces, and obviously this is going to create trust issues. So doubt, suspicion, <clears throat> these are going to taint your new rel relationship and you're, you'll often be trying to process or put together the pieces of what happened to you in your current relationship but that often comes out as projection. So you'll be projecting your past trauma onto the new person or people in your present interactions, which lead to undue strain, misunderstandings, and eventually another broken relationship. You're also going to be bringing in a ton of emotional baggage, you know, unresolved emotions that lead to or have formed unhealthy defense mechanisms, um, the inability to form healthy and genuine connections with others, the repetition of past patterns that you had to develop in order to survive will come out and you will likely attract another toxic relationship when you're not healed because the only people who can handle that type of chaos are people who thrive in the midst of it, which like narcissists, they cause all of the chaos because it's easy for them to then control you and other people in the relationship, as well as the circumstances that surround all of those relationships. So it's really important to understand that not only will you be pushing away healthy people, but you'll actually be attracting more chaos into your life because Again, the, the people who thrive in that type of environment are going to be abusers. So this path of relationships is obviously fraught with pain and more perpetuating, which means deeper cycles of unhealthy relationships. But let's look at what happens if that does not happen. If you choose a different path, if you choose to get healed and you choose to break these cycles of abuse and clean up the mess, clean up the chaos that you've just um, come out of. So what I like to describe this as is really a 
a rebirth. There's going to be a lot of things about yourself that you're going to have to let die. Behaviors that you picked up, thought patterns, you know, what you thought was acceptable in terms of how people treat you, the lack of boundaries, all these things are going to have to go when you're coming out of this chaos. When you rediscover your self-worth, you start putting together what happened to you and and really understanding how you got to where you are right now, really understanding your past. You'll learn to set boundaries and really get used to doing self-reflection in a meaningful way that will impact your decisions that you're making in the moment. It will also help you to cleanse these painful memories. And addressing your wounds isn't just about you. It isn't just about getting rid of that chaos. Again, it's creating a blank slate that you can create whatever type of life you want on onto that canvas now. And that should include healthy relationships, right? So here's the beauty of what happens when you've healed from narcissistic abuse. You will have such an incredible amount of discernment, if done correctly, that there's no way that you're going to be manipulated again. You will be able to engage in conversations that you have to have with narcissists. You know, they really are everywhere. You can't just try to avoid narcissists because you'd be cutting out really all people if that was the case. So you'll be able to understand who they are long before they're in your inner circle. This will create such a renewed sense of trust within yourself, which is really what you need to be focusing on during your process of healing. You'll know that the past doesn't define you and it doesn't need to indicate what your future is going to be like, what your future is going to be like uh, at all. You can have a completely different outcome once you have the understanding and the knowledge and you're ready to implement those things. You will also recognize that walls really don't keep you safe. Boundaries will keep you safe and the walls actually create emotional closedness even to yourself. It keeps you from understanding what you are really thinking and feeling and where the wounds are. When you are able to have emotional openness, you're in tune with your own emotions and you're able to express them healthily and op- openly with other people without fear of what that means in terms of retribution or rejection from the other person or people that you're sharing them with. You'll also recognize your worth. You'll have no problem establishing and maintaining respectful boundaries in new relationships and in fact demanding that this is how other people treat you because you naturally treat yourself with that type of respect and love that you want others to treat you with as well. You'll also be able to be fully present in the moment. This is something that so many people overlook because they don't recognize how much of Their present life is being spent either focusing on the past and ruminating, doing toxic rumination about what happened in the past, or thinking about what's going to happen in the future. You know, what is the narcissist going to say when they see or hear or whatever this situation that just happened? You are losing so much of your present life by trying to navigate and manage and control the narcissist's reactions, both in the past and in the future that you lose so much of your present. But when you're fully healed, you are able to be fully present. That means when your children are playing, you know, sports at at, at, at games and stuff, you're actually watching them. You're making memories with them. You're not thinking about what happened last night or what's going to happen when you get home. Or, you know, if you're out at dinner with friends, you're not thinking about what fight you just came out of and you're trying to put on a happy face. You're actually able to be present and you're able to accept and embrace your life for what it is right now. I love being a coach and one of the reasons that I love being a coach is to see people from their own perspective testify about what their life was like and now what their life is like. You know, what they were putting up with versus what they've created for themselves now. And the truth is that that power was always within them. They just needed help recognizing it and pulling it to the surface. I have a narcissistic detox intensive, which I really encourage you to join. It will truly transform your life. 
the trauma bond is guaranteed to get broken inside of there. And it really helps you overhaul every single area of your life, including your finances. So if you're wondering, how can I rebuild financially from whatever you just went through with the narcissist, I really want you to consider joining. You can do that by texting me or by shooting me an email, and that information is in the description of this video. I encourage you to also check out other videos on my YouTube channel where you can hear testimonies of people who have come out of narcissistic abuse share their own personal resilience and the transformative power of healing. Because if you knew how good your life could be when you go through this process, when you put in the work and you're ready to transform yourself inwardly so that your outer world becomes a reflection of what you carry, you would start that journey right now. There would be no more delay about whether or not that is really for you or if that's the right choice for you or if you could actually do that. You would let go of the resentment and the bitterness that you have for the narcissist that is really keeping you from connecting with who you are and your your destiny. You would do whatever it would take for you to get healed. And so I just want to offer that opportunity is to join my narcissistic detox intensive, which is guaranteed to help you do that. Ultimately, I want you to remember that healing really is a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. And it's also not just a one way kind of slow and steady incline. It looks like this. It's ups and downs. And that's normal. You should expect that. That's one of the reasons that I love creating support groups in all of my programs because I want people to know these ups and downs, these ebbs and flows are normal in life. And we need to recognize the, the natural ebb and flow of life just like you breathe in and you breathe out and that's a natural breathing movement versus the ebbs and flows, the extreme highs and the extreme lows that you'll have with a narcissist which is really just the counterfeit of the natural ebb and flow, the in and the out of, of normal life processes such as healing. So you are not alone. There's a community for you if you're ready to join. One other opportunity I want to present to you is if you are not quite ready to overhaul everything in your life is my new You Are Not Crazy group. This is a monthly membership or you can join for an entire year and there's some bonuses for you there if you choose to do that. But this creates also a community. You will have access to a private group, but you will have easily digestible podcasts, journaling prompts, and monthly guided meditations. This is really meant to just kind of give you some space so that you can regain clarity of mind so that you can eventually form a plan of whatever it looks like for you to move forward, whether that's to stick it out with the narcissist and just get coping skills and tools to use when you're in that kind of environment, or if it's for you to completely change your life and to sever ties with the narcissist in every way possible. So that's the more beginning step that I have available. If you want to join that, the link to join is also in the description of this video. I hope this video makes it very clear that Regardless of what kind of future you want, it's really important that you get whole because unless you plan to become a hermit and live in your house all the days of your life, you're going to have to interact with other people. And even if you were to lock yourself in your home and never come out, you would be stuck with you and you might not like the thoughts and the patterns of behavior and your emotional ups and downs and instability in your in your mindsets with nobody there to guide you back into what's truth or remind you of what's truth. And so I really hope this video helps you understand the benefits of healing, not just for yourself, but also for your future relationships and that the narcissist is actually doing you a favor because once you recognize the, not only that narcissism is so destructive, but you start getting discernment on how to identify these types of toxic people well before they come all the way and burrow themselves all the way into your inner circle in your life, you're going to be so grateful. I was talking with a client recently and I was telling him, you know, right now what you're developing is anti-venom. 
You know, there's snakes everywhere. You can't control if there's snakes out there. And you can't even control if one of them bites you. Snakes are just doing what they're going to do, right? They're going to bite you. But what's really important is that you don't let that one snake bite kill you. You actually develop an anti-venom to it. And you do that by, by taking what the narcissist has given you and using it to build your strength and to pull out your true identity. So anyway, I cannot wait to see you guys in one of my groups, either the Narcissistic Detox Intensive or my You Are Not Crazy program. I love walking out healing with people and I can't wait to see you there.